a roaring personality. Why does the lion roar? The lion roars because he wants, um, you know, lunch. He wants supper. He wants dinner. And he roars so that the voice of the roaring will terrify the animals. And those who can run to escape his grief, they can't run because the roaring has brought fear. And the devil, like a roaring lion, if you become afraid, you might become the candidate for his dinner. You will not become a candidate for anybody's dinner. That's why it says, though all that rises up against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Somebody who has been reading the word, drinking the word, assimilating the word, meditating on the word, is the word that brings faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when faith comes in, fear has to come out. And as you take in the word, you feed on the word, and you have a confidence in the Lord, every problem in your life, gone in Jesus' name. And look at Psalm 118. I'm reading from verse 6. In Psalm 118, verse 6, the Lord is on my side. Say that for yourself. Look at this. Uh, let's picture Satan standing there and you, a child of God, son, daughter of God, saint of God. And Satan is there and the son of God, a child of God is there. And the Lord is coming and Satan is there. The son is there. The daughter is there. On which side will God go? On your side. You are there, and then an enemy is there, or enemies are there, or it can't be host of enemies are there, and God comes now and looks at two sides. On which side will he be? On your side. And if the creator of the heavens and the earth, and if the father, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the father of everyone born again, who is saved, and is now in the family, if the Lord is on your side, you are an overcomer already. Yeah. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Look at that word will there. That will, it's your choice. It's your choice. If the lion roars, it's your choice. Think about God, you'll not fear. Think about his promise, you'll not fear. Think about all his provision for you, and you'll not fear. You stay, you stand at the center of the will of God. And you check up. Where am I? I'm at the center of the will of God. What am I doing here? I'm obeying God here. And will God support anyone obeying him? The answer is yes. All right. If that is the case, I will not fear. Say that for yourself. It says, what can man do unto me? What can man do? Do unto me is like saying, Here I am. I know Goliath is tall, lanky, strong, is being a warrior from his youth. What can man? It's me, a man. They call him Goliath, but he's man. And what can Saul do unto me? They call him Saul, but he is man. And when you understand that your enemy is contending with the Almighty God, there will be no fear in your heart. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. And then it says in verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, reading there from verse 6, it says, So that we may boldly say, we may courageously say, we may 
heartily say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, remember them which have, which have ruled over you, who have spoken unto you the words of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of of their conversation then in verse 8 it says jesus christ the same yesterday on the stormy sea the lord is still the same at the crossroad the lord is still the same and when there's any affliction when there is uh, any infirmity when there's any sickness when there's any demonic attack the lord is still the same he said jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever in your life in jesus name in ephesians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 14 ephesians 3 14 it says for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ and then in verse 15 it says of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named verse 16 says that he would grant you are you there he'll grant you is going to according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man that's what we need is that strength of the inner man the strength in our spirit the strength in our heart that we need and once that strength is there it will take you through the lord will take me through it'll take you through in jesus name we come to number three here number three here is the focused pursuit of servants for his cause it tells us in psalm 27 reading from verse 4 one thing have i desired of the lord one thing have i desired of the lord that's what david desired one thing moses at his own desire to to take the children of israel out of egypt through the wilderness and take them to the promised land one thing a by desire joshua had the one thing that he desired to lead the children of god and the children of israel into the land of canaan and to possess the land and to divide the land one thing a by desire isaiah had the one thing he desired that the revelation of god will come to him and he'll give that revelation to the people of God John the Baptist at one desire I have a calling the Lord that called me to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the heart of the father to the children everyone God calls he gives a principal work he gives a work that is purposeful and everyone should be able to say like David said I know what the Lord has called me for and I know what I desire and I know what I am aiming for and he said one thing have I desired Paul the apostle at the one thing he desired I've revealed myself unto you for this purpose not to fight Goliath that was for David and not to have the land of Canaan that was for Joshua but in the case of Paul he had the one thing and you that God has called you into the ministry you must have the one thing the one thing the one thing and you don't allow anything to shake you out of that one thing one thing have I desired and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple look at verse 5 in verse 5 for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion somebody say yes he will I said he will in the time of trouble for Moses because he was after that one thing the Lord protected him Pharaoh said you'll not see my face again the day you see my face again you will die 
And did he die from Pharaoh? No, because the Lord will hide you in his pavilion. Look at Joshua. All those countries had a confederacy against him. They wanted to take him off the land of the living. No, they could not. In fact, he was the one that overcame them, and you will overcome. And the case of David, look at David and Goliath said, You come to me, am I a dog? You come to me with a sling, and it's stone i will feed the birds of the air with your flesh no he couldn't do that david overcame you will overcome look at all the apostle paul the apostle 40 people they bound themselves in an oath and they said we will not eat anything until we kill paul we can't hear about them anymore they've gone to the other side forever and ever but uh, paul the apostle he said the Lord shall preserve me from every evil. The Lord will preserve you from every evil. When you have the cause of the Lord, the way of the Lord, the assignment of the Lord, the appointment of the Lord, and you make your mind to stay on that thing, anywhere you go, everywhere you go, the Lord will protect you. Look at Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Paul the Apostle, it says, this one thing I do. And if you can come to that, identify why the Lord has called you. Identify what the Lord has called you for. And you say, this one thing I do. Invitation will come from here and from there. Distraction will come from here and from there. And uh, some offer will come from there and, uh, and there. But you say, this one thing I do. You identify what the the Lord has called you for. You identify what the Lord has strengthened you for. You identify what the Lord has prepared you for and you are able to say this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Look at verse 14. It says, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's how we overcome and that's how we make progress. You will make progress. But you must, you must be a man, a woman of one thing, concentration. Uh, there's something we call prison. You, you, many of us know that. It's a glass block that has uh, three surfaces and three angles. And then when the sun is shining, the rays of the sun will scatter everywhere and may not burn anything but you put that prism near a sheet of paper and then the rays come and the rays of the sun concentrate on one point then it makes a burning in that paper when everything you've God, your skill, your training, your expertise, your prayer, and your desire, and your resources, and your finance, you put it on this one thing, your life, and the people that work with you, you put on this one thing, it's like all the rays coming through the prism, you will make a mark in the world. You'll make a mark through your ministry. It says, I press forward. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 24. Acts 20 verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry, the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the, the gospel of the grace of God. And I pray that staying power, 
that is able to focus on the one thing the Lord has called you to that stains stabilizing solid supporting power the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus name we come to point number two now point number two we're looking at the glorious consecration with purposeful submissive humility we're looking at psalm 27 and i'm reading from verse 6 it says and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies it says those enemies are around about me therefore will i offer in his tabernacle the sacrifices of joy that is when i come to sacrifice to the lord i do that with joy i come to sing i do that with joy i come to preach i do that with joy i come to offer any service to the lord i do that with excitement with happiness and with joy and then he says i will see yea i will sing praises unto the lord in verse 7 it says hear o lord when i cry when i pray when i make supplication with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me it will answer you and then in verse 8 it says when thou says seek my face he had the commandment from the lord and the lord said you know what you have to do david seek my face my heart responded immediately and my heart said unto thee thy face lord well, I see. Then in verse 9, it says, Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O Lord, the God of my salvation. And then in verse 10, it says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Yeah. When helpers forsake you, when supporters forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. Yeah. Three things we're looking at. Number one, offering sacrifices with joy to the Lord. Offering sacrifices with joy to the Lord. Number two, obeying and seeking as justified justified people the face of the lord as justified people you're being and seeking the face of the lord number three obtaining succor obtaining support obtaining help obtaining sustaining power obtaining succor for the just from the Lord. We're looking at number one. Number one, offering sacrifices with joy to the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice you present your body a living sacrifice what does that mean how can i do that can i just go somewhere and say god are you there i bring my body and i present my body before you as a living sacrifice not really how do you do that you come to the lord in your prayer in your consecration in your devotion you say lord i consecrate my eyes unto you and my eyes will not behold anything contrary to your will i present my ears unto you my ears will not hear anything polluting that will be contrary to your will i present my tongue my mouth my my voice unto you and my voice will never sing or say anything contrary to your word i present my feet unto you and my feet will never go anywhere contrary to your revelation your word your will i present my hands unto you and my hands will never never write anything do anything that is contrary to your word and to the way of holiness you bring your body 
as a living sacrifice unto God, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Hebrews chapter 13. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 13, we're looking at verse 15. It says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. What does that mean? Sacrifice of praise to the Lord continually. There are times the body doesn't feel like Christ sin of, but I need to go there, so I must rise up. There are times the voice does not feel like singing unto the Lord. I have that challenge, I have that challenge, and I have that predicament, I have that pressure. I'm looking for where this and that will come in so I can take care of my family. The bodies are there. That the voice appears not ready to sing, but it says, I will offer sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our leaves giving thanks unto his name. It says in verse 16, it says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for our such sacrifices, God is well pleased. We're looking at first Peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile deception lying and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking it says in verse 2 that we as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby verse 3 it says if so be ye have tasted that the lord is gracious verse 4 in verse 4 to whom coming as unto a living stone this allowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious verse 5 now talks about the sacrifice ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood righteous priesthood just priesthood obedient priesthood and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Welcome to number two here. Number two, obeying and seeking as justified the face of the Lord. It says in Psalm 27 verse 8, When thou said, seek my face, when you commanded, seek my face. When you gave the order, seek my face. Immediately my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Then in verse 9, in verse 9, Hide not thy face far from me, but put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been mine help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. The psalmist always remembered is the God of my salvation, is the God of my strength, is the God my succor, is the God my supplier, is the God my sanctifier, he is the God my sustainer and he is the God my shepherd and because he always remembered that that he belonged personally unto God he said I will obey him he has commanded me seek my face and my heart said 
thy face, O Lord, will I see it. Look at Psalm 63, verse 1. In Psalm 63, verse 1, O God, thou art my God, and early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And then in verse 2, it says to see thy power. I seek your face so that I can see your power. I can see your glory. I can see your sustaining power and your staying power in my life. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. And then in verse 2, it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. He's saying he has called us. He wants us to behold his glory and to behold his power. He wants us to behold his majesty. And he's so versed like the heavens. And we have not exhausted seeing and seeking the glory and the might and the power of God. It says you don't have time to seek the things of this world running after the rats, running after the after the squirrel or whatever, and running after the bats and all the things of the world. Look up, because the glory of God is there, and He wants you to seek Him and discover His power and His glory. And He says, search your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. In verse 3 it says, for ye are dead, dead to the things of the world, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Then in verse 4 it says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yeah. And somebody says, Amen. Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three, obtaining succor, obtaining support, obtaining help for the just from the Lord. In Psalm 27 verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, why would they forsake me? Maybe they are worshipping idols. And then I've come to say, I've discovered that Jesus is Savior. And there is no other Savior but Him. But that he says, the family idol you'll worship. I said, no. I thought I could do that before. I cannot do that now. Because I've given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the father and the mother might say, okay, if that is your decision, go and find uh, whatever you have for support in life, go and find it when my father and my mother forsake me. When we get to our places of work in our profession, there are fathers and mothers, and the, uh, the people, when we get in there, they say, boy, come in here. I've been here for a long time. Uh, this is how we do this here. This is how we do this here. And this is how we perpetrate corruption and you know all that and because you know salary alone will not do we cannot depend on that alone and then you look at him you say sir with all due respect I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And my life has become totally new and I cannot do that. What? Are we pagans? Which you are Christians? Which you have the Bible? If you come to my house, you'll see the big Bible, the poor big Bible, and the small Bible, and even Bible on my phone. Am I a pagan? I'm telling you that this is what we do here. You still say, sir, I'm sorry. I'm not saying you're a pagan. I'm not saying you're idol worship, but I am saying I have known the Lord. Anybody known the Lord there? Born again there? And I have made up my mind, I will not 
do that. When you're a student in a college, in a university, or anywhere, and then you see what the other students are doing, they want this, they want this, or maybe you, you've been born again and you come to the college, and so before they come to welcome you, they say, come, come, come. Over here, we have this a group, we have this gang, we have this, we have that, and uh, the one I belong to, the other I belong to this, come and join this, we will say thank you. And they are the people that welcome you to college. They are the people that help you to know that's where we'll find that department and that department. That's where we we'll do this and that. They are like father, mother in that place who say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. What do you mean? What do you mean? I tell you that if you are going to succeed in this institution, there are people, it's not just lecturer, you must listen to us. <laughs> Say, I'm sorry, I'm born again. Any born again people in the house today? Born again. Born again. I said born again. And then you say, I cannot do that. Then it's okay, go your way. And they'll be looking at you, rebellious, disobedient. You will not please. We control even lecturers. And look at this small boy, look at this small girl. You will not listen to us. Okay, go your way. When your father and your mother, and when those people of power, of authority in that institution, when they forsake you, the Almighty God will take you up yeah. is higher than them is greater than them and whatever they do the Lord himself will make sure that nothing hurts you from them in Jesus name yeah. when my father and my mother forsake me we must go beyond that when my children forsake me. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, the family has been going on jolly well. And then, uh, at your age, old in life, you came across the gospel, the saving gospel. And you say, this is the direction I'm going to follow for the rest of my life. And you quit the tradition of the people. Your children that you sent to school, your children that you raised up, they might come and say, Danny, what are we hearing? Where did you go to worship, uh, you know, last Sunday? What kind of new thing is this? We didn't know that at your old age, you'll be into something like this. And you, that you say, children, you know, Jesus is the only way. And Jesus is now my savior. I'm not going to double into this or into that anymore. No more occultic power. No more idolatrous power. No more did you medicine. All I know now, God and Christ. And then the children will say, okay, you can go your way and they abandon you and you'll not bring money and you'll not visit and they'll not call you'll not say okay i'm going to reconsider my children are more important than jesus because they are the ones feeding me and since they are more important than jesus i call the and say my children i get your message i am sorry you'll never do that yeah. when my sons and my daughters forsake me the lord will take me up god is able to take care of you with or without them with or without father and mother with or without helper or supporter when my father and my mother forsake me then the lord will take me up look at isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 can a woman forget a sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea they may forget yet will i not forget you the lord will not forget you he will be with you at the very end of your life it will carry you through look at joshua chapter one i'm reading from verse three joshua chapter one verse three every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon 
that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, look at verse 5. In verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before you. How long? How long? You know, there are people that I'm a believer. When I was younger, I could run the race all alone in the strength, in the power of the Lord. But now, as a believer, you're growing older, and maybe your body is growing weaker, and it's like, I could run the race by myself those days, but now, I don't think I can do that again. Yes, you can. I said, yes, you can. Because he says, all the days of your life, he says, there shall no man be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The Lord will not forsake you. He will not fail you. All the days of your life, it will be with you. Yeah. When in your life you find that you depend on him, on her, and you tell yourself, my life is ruined without him. My life is in shambles without her. And God sees that, all right, you've turned your eyes away from him. And now he is your mini God. And she is your present God. God will say, all right, let him, let her take care of you. I'm still here, but I want you to, you know, go ahead and trust the people that have not become your God. Then there will be problems that will arise that father and mother, brother and sister, uncle and nephew cannot solve. And then you have to run back to God and you say, Lord, I learned my lesson. Where he thought I'll get support and succor and help and upliftment, everything has failed. And God has said, God will say, I hope you've learned that lesson permanently. And then he will take you up again. And then you will never forsake him anymore. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. And then in verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. All men forsook him. All helpers forsook him. But he said, notwithstanding, the God of heaven stood with me and strengthened me. He was strengthening you. That by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. A better amen. Yeah. A confident amen. Yeah. And now in verse 18. In verse 18. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Yeah. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Yeah. We come to point number three now. Point number three, the good courage of prayerful, strengthened hearts. We're reading from Psalm 27, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in, the, in a plain path because of mine enemies. Twelve, deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out 
cruelty. Then in verse 13, I had fainted. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then in verse 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Three things we're looking at. Number one, walking with the Lord. Number two, waiting on the Lord. Number three, working for the Lord. Number one, walking with the Lord without faltering from his path. Number two, waiting on the Lord with faith in his promises. Number three, walking for the Lord without the fear of principalities. Number one, number one, walking with the Lord without faltering from his path. It tells us in Psalm 25, reading from verse 4, it says, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. And then in verse 5, it says, Lead me in thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all that day he will do that in your life in Jesus name yeah. look at verse 9 verse 9 the meek will he guide in judgment the meek will he teach his way verse 12 in verse 12 it tells us what man is he that feareth the Lord without fearing man him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose and the Lord will help you in the way you will choose in Jesus name Psalm 119 I'm reading from verse 10 119 we're reading from verse 10 with my whole heart have I sought thee we don't seek the Lord with half heartedness but our whole heart our whole being everything within us we come to seek the way of the Lord with my whole heart have I sought thee oh let me not wonder from thy commandments in verse 105 it says thy word is a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path 130 130 it says the entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple for you to know where you will walk and the path you will tread so that you'll get to the appointment assignment achievement of the lord the word of god will be the light in your pathway we come to number two number two is waiting on the lord of faith in his promises in uh, psalm 27 verse 13 i would have fainted unless i believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living then in verse 14 wait on the lord wait on the lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait i say on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 28. Isaiah 40, reading from verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of, of his understanding. Verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. He'll give you power today. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. He will increase your strength. Then in verse 30, it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord, 
They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Uh, there are people today, almost everybody in the world, Christians and non-Christians, they're too much in a hurry. They cannot wait on the Lord. Even it affects other areas of life. They cannot wait to get fresh fruit, fresh vegetable. Everything they eat is canned. They can everything with all the chemicals as preservation. And once they just warm, they eat and then they go their way. Everybody is in a hurry. They cannot wait and do good to themselves. And then it affects the Christian life. It affects the Christian professional. It affects the Christian minister. We cannot wait to gather food fresh, revelation fresh, inspiration fresh, instruction fresh from the Lord. But it says, but wait, they that wait upon the Lord, you wait in prayer. And there are times you have to add fasting, that to wait in fasting before the Lord. There are times you have to have a personal conference and you take all the messages that have benefited your life and you're slugging one, you go to the YouTube, you discover this and then for the whole day you lock up yourself and you're reading, you're hearing, you're, you're assimilating the word and you are praying, you wait on the Lord. That's how we refresh ourselves, renew ourselves and that's how we don't get tired that we are moving from day to day, from event to event and the strength of the Lord is still mighty in our lives but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. Have you noticed sometimes you have the same two legs and the same hands and the same heart that those athletes have? But you see those athletes, they wake up in the morning and the first thing they want, they want to jog, they want to run. And you see them on the sides of the, you know, of the, of the street and how they're exercising themselves. And you, you don't do that. You don't exercise yourself 10 minutes and 5 minutes or 15 minutes every day. And then when it it comes the time to run you begin to run it's like your heart is going to jump out of you it's like you do not know what you are going to do and you say i'm here god saved my life if that thing that is running after me gets me here well what can i do it's when you do that every day you take about 30 minutes every day and you wait upon the lord and you read his word and you soak in his word and you look at the promises and you meditate on the promises just 30 minutes and then you have to whatever you want to do and when you come back in the evening you look at the word again and you study the word again and you're waiting on the Lord and television has to go aside all the other media handles have to go aside because now you're waiting on the Lord it is when you do that every morning and every evening and then during the day anything that comes you remember the promises of God that he had given you in the morning and you are sending your SOS unto God every time. That's how you become strong. It is not just, you know, a one meal on one day of the whole week that keeps us strong. It is that daily waiting upon the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You know, when we are not waiting upon the Lord, the wings of the eagle we had in our earlier years of the Christian life, the feathers have been plucked off. A little anger, one feather is gone. A little complaint, another feather is gone. And a little interaction with the people of the world, the feathers are gone. By the time the problem comes and you want to stretch your wings, all the feathers are gone. Even if you stretch the wings, there is no wing that will pull you through but when you allow the Lord to renew that eagle and to refresh that eagle and all the wings that have been plucked off everything replaced today yeah.
and then you're full of strength and full of power and full of assurance and full of confidence because you have waited upon the Lord then it says you will mount up with wings as eagles they shall run somebody there you are run maybe you put on the baton you say I'm tired opposition too much persecution too much and the things I don't understand they're too much let the younger people come let them come and take their baton I'm tired I cannot run again today you will rise up you will run again because it says they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint you will stand you will walk you will run you will mount up and you will not be faint i'm coming to the last point here number three here walking for the lord without fear of principalities look at that word principalities there there's prince the prince of the power of the air there are ministers there are people professionals they fear the prince of the power of the air they might pray they might fast they might read the bible they might have good doctrine but they fear the prince of the power of the air number two look at that word principalities there's a word there principal 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 there are groups and gangs that have their principles and they come up against a family they come against a ministry they come against a local church and the principal sometimes they will even write to the person they'll say we understand we know that you are forceful we know that you are powerful and mighty and we hear everything you say as you're threatening anyone that will do this and this and the principal of that gang will write to you and say we're after you we we'll watch your movement. We we'll know where you go. Anytime we we'll want to get you, we're here. And he says he is the principal. But you know, we'll bring every principal down. Yeah. That you'll not be running El Tasket after all. That principal, he wasn't born that way. He was a baby. He knew nothing and then he was growing up he came across a gang and then he was learning and learning from that gang until they promoted him and he became their principal he was born a baby i was born a baby and then born again and i have the word of power the word and the road that divided the red sea that i have and the word that stopped the sun at the time of joshua that i have and the word that destroyed 185,000 soldiers of the enemy camp just in one night and I have that one and I have the one that walked on the sea to get into the boat I have his word and I have the one that he entered into the boat all the storm came to an end and I have the one that dealt with Herod in Acts chapter 12 and he says I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you. If that principal of the dark society can develop to the point of coming to threaten you, me, principal of my ministry, I'm principal of my family, I'm principal of my church denomination, I'm principal of believers in God. I am here as principal, depending on a power greater than that principal, I'll bring them down. Yeah. In your life, in your ministry, wait upon the Lord and the prince you overcome. Yeah. The principality, the principal you overcome. And now 
the principalities. They have a small throne there, a small throne there, a small throne there, and a small throne over there. And I say, who are you there? They say, who are principalities? I say, why are you sitting down there? They say, we're looking for any good things that are going on. We want to ruin and wreck and destroy. And then the Lord says, I will decree a sin and it shall be established unto me and that whatever i say whatever i bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever i lose on earth will be loose in heaven the principalities don't have the final say the final says in your mouth yeah. and as you look at them, then you say, I am walking with the Lord. And as we are walking with the Lord, without any fear of prince of power and the principles and the principalities, you are an overcomer. Yeah. Any overcomer in the house today? Me, in all these six, you. I'm talking about somebody there. You. You will be more than a conqueror yeah. now you will rise up and leave all your fears behind literally rise up rise up rise up rise up and leave all your fears behind all the things that threatened you in the past look at them now and say they are gone they are defeated new power in your life today new anointing in your life today a new focus in your life today nothing will stop your onward journey open your mouth open your mouth raise your voice to the lord and say yes lord yes lord yes lord here i am i have everything you have proclaimed in my life it will bless you. It will lift you up. Take in the word. Believe the word. Understand that word is for you. It's the God of your salvation. It's the God of your strength. It's the God your succor. It's the God your supplier. Is that God your sanctifier? Is the God your sufficiency? Your sustainer? Your shepherd? He see you through. With him, you cannot fail. With him, you cannot be defeated. With him, you cannot be submerged under the storm. He is your shepherd. He is your Lord. Don't go back. Don't look back. Don't succumb. Don't surrender your shield to the enemy. Don't faint. Get up and walk. Get up and run. Wait. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. He will strengthen your heart.
He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. What man or woman can do unto me. Be an overcomer. Be conqueror. 